Good morning and welcome to Trid the Chapel of Trinity Church in Southport, Connecticut on this Tuesday, uh, excuse me, March 9th, 2021, in, this third, in the third week of Lent. My name is Ted Fries and I am here to uh, be the person as a lay reader to help conduct the service. Um, the service is uh, available to people not just live as now, but also online on Facebook and also YouTube. Um, and the service can be found in the Book of Common Prayer at, on page 75 or online at pcbonline.com. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of times, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us to, through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gifts of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. May your Spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Today we commemorate Gregory, Bishop of Nyssa. Gregory was born in 394, uh, and he was a man enchanted with Christ and dazzled by the meaning of his passion. He was born in Caesarea of Cappadocia, which is now Turkey, the younger brother of Basil the Great, and in his youth was but a reluctant Christian. Let me correct something. He was actually born in 334. When he was 20, the, trans the transfer of the relics of the holy martyrs of Sebasti to the family chapel in Anessi, quickened Gregory's faith, and he became a practicing Christian and a lector. He abandoned his ministry, however, to become a rhetorician like his father. His brother Basil, in his struggle against the Emperor Valens, compelled Gregory to become Bishop of Nyssa, a town ten miles from Caesarea. Knowing himself to be unfit for the charge, Gregory described his ordination as the most miserable day of his life. Although he resented his brother's dominance, Gregory was shocked by Basil's death in 379. Months later, he received another shock. His beloved sister, Macrina, was dying. Gregory hastened to her, and she died in his arms. The two deaths, while stunning Gregory, also freed him to develop as a deeper and richer philosopher and theologian. He reveals his delight in the created order in several treatises including the Great Catechism. In 381, Gregory attended the Second Ecumenical Conference in Constantinople, where he was honored as the, quote, pillar of the church, end quote. In the fight for the Nicene Creed, he was one of the three great Eastern theologians with Basil the Great and Gregory of Nazianzus, known as the Cappadocian Fathers. Gregory died on March 9th, probably in Nyssa, in about the year 394. Let us say a prayer for him. Almighty God, you have revealed in your church your eternal being of glorious majesty and perfect love as one God in the Trinity of persons. Give us grace that, like your bishop, Gregory of Nyssa, we may continue steadfast in the confession of the faith and constant in our worship of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us now say the confession found on page 79. <clears throat>
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll now say the Jubilate, found on page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is great, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We shall now read Psalm 56, Deus Nostra Refugium. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. Though its waters are rage and foam, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. See, she shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. First reading today will be a reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verses 21 through 34. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, add your birth offerings to your sacrifices and eat the flesh. For in the days that I brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt, I did not speak to them or command them concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this command I gave them, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk in the way that I command you, so that it may well be with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but in the stubbornness of their evil will, they walked in their own counsels and looked backward rather than forward. From the day that your ancestors came out of, Israel, out of Egypt unto this day, I have persistently sent all my servants and prophets to them day after day, yet they did not listen to me, or pay attention, but they stiffened their necks. They did worse than their ancestors did. So you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. You shall call to them, but they will not answer you. You shall say to them, this is the nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord their God and did not accept discipline. Truth has perished, it is cut off from their lips. Cut off your hair and throw it away. Raise a lamentation in the bare heights, for the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation that provoked his wrath. For the people of Judah have done evil in my sight, said the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house that is called by my name, defiling it. And they go on building the high places of Topheth, which is the valley of the son of Hinnon, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, the day shall surely be coming, says the Lord, when it will be no more called Topheth, 
or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the slaughter of slaughters. For they will bury in Topheth until there is no more room. The corpses of this people will be food for the birds of the air and for the animals of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. And I will bring to an end the sound of mirth and gladness, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for the land shall become a waste. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we'll say the song of praise, Benedictus S. Dominus, Canticle 13. <clears throat> Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the thrones of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Next, the second reading is a lesson from Romans 4, verses 13 through 25, on a letter of Paul to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents to the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and promise is void, for the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, neither is there any violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God, in whom he believed, who, goes life, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become, quote, the father of many nations, end quote, according to what was said. Quote, so numerous shall be your descendants, uh, he said. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own family, which was already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah, his wife's womb, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith, quote, was reckoned in him as righteousness, end quote. Now the words, quote, it was reckoned to him, end quote, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespass and, our, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The song of the Lamb, Dignus S. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours oh, by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb, that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God. For every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests will serve God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill to when. Amen. Thus ends today's reading. Let us now say the Lord's Prayer.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, to all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for today. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear us and grant that we, to whom you have given a fervent desire to pray, may by your mighty aid be defended and comforted in all our dangers and adversities. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We'll now read a selection of prayers from pages 814 on. For the human family. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love, and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for families. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who set us the solitary in families, we commend to thy continued care the homes in which people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech thee, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who, in holy wedlock have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we evermore may be kindly affection one to another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for our country. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of the favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that, through obedience to the law, we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the days of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now pray for those on Trinity's prayer list.
We pray for Sister Jane Mankers, Jill, Stephen Shea, Patria Swan, Peter Swan, Joyce Miller, Lillian, Lee, Whitney, Jane, John Roberts, Philip. Let us also say a prayer for all those who have departed and those who have suffered from coronavirus, either severely or died from it. O oh Lord, remember those who have died in thy faith, and may they be with you and the ones they love in heaven now. Amen. Let us now say a prayer attributed to St. Francis, found on page 833. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to loved. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let's now have a minute of silence. We'll now say the prayer of thanksgiving, found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now we'll say a prayer from uh, attributed to St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us peace at this time with one accord to take our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them also. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this wor world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.
Enjoy this day the Lord has given us.